Hello, my name's Lance Neem. Amateur Radio Call Sign, ZL3LAD. Today we're going to have a look at the Stans and Cosmos Radio Ace Kit. We'll power it up for this power supply to save batteries and put the results for this speaker so you can hear at home how it works. Also, I intend to do a follow-up video where we do some basic modifications to see if we can improve the results and also use different valves apart from the 12AU7. So, please stay watching. Yes, yeah, so I bought this uh, Tams and Cosmos off eBay, obviously. Uh, they're not really readily available in New Zealand, unfortunately, that's where I live. Um, so I picked it up for a reasonable sort of price. It's, um, it uh, hasn't been opened inside, I just had a brief look before. Uh, it's still on its plastic. And I'll show you that in a minute. But the outside is in reasonable, Nick. Especially for such an old... Uh, well, it's reasonably old. 2005 they were started, I believe. Uh, production, that is. Um, so let's uh, let's open it up anyway and have a look. I'll open up this one. I'll probably open it up the wrong way, as you would expect. I think if I open up the other end, I might have the little instruction manual that side, I think, from memory. Let's have a look, eh? Uh, open it up. Aha! Instruction manual. Who would have guessed? That's that there. Just um, open it up briefly. I think, oh, warranty card. Put it on top there. I'll put it on warranty card there. Stash it away. I won't put it on top of the um, calling for the power supply. It'll be a dumb move uh, on my part. But it's a fairly detailed little book which runs through the radio receiver and gives a brief overview of tubes or valves. I mean, I'm uh, touch English. I like to call them valves instead of tubes. I'll just put that up there. And we'll pull the set from the cardboard box. Nothing else in the cardboard box. Piece of stray styrofoam. I'll just put that down on the floor. So, here it is. Still on this plastic. What we'll do today is we're going to undo the plastic and we'll plug in the valves and coils and fire it up with this power supply here, as we just mentioned. I think I'll take to it with the knife actually soon in a minute. Oh well, no go make now, let's open it up, eh? Uh, what's the best way to attack it, I wonder? I take it being the right word, you see I've got a knife there, got a sharp one there, a kitchen one. Um, well, here we are, what's this? We go from the back side of it. Not that I prefer the back side or anything, but um, if I cut myself, you won't see it on the camera. That's clever thinking there. What I might to cut myself because I'm uncoordinated and clumsy, along with a whole host of other wonderful traits. Some little assistants just coming in to give me a hand, a little LJ. The dog, he likes to help. He likes food more, but he also likes to help his pocket. Well packaged up, is what I can say. Put that over there. And see, oh yes, it's all there. Might just take these cores out, because I can see underneath there's another piece of styrofoam holding the little uh, baseball or chassis in if you like. So I'll take the, um, I better leave, that's a shortwave coil, dial, uh, yes, shortwave coil, AM coil, 12AU7, a Chinese production, otherwise known as an ECC82. A nice valve, I think, um, I actually uh, use these tubes and have bought them myself from China and I've had no issues in radio circuits with them whatsoever. I believe they're a good quality little product, but I'm not an audio <laughs> expert. So don't jump on me for that please. But they're a very good tube for radio receiver designs, I can vouch for that. So we've got uh, air on an earth wire. And a pair of headphones, and just with the age, 
the foam has deteriorated, so I won't undo those from the plastic. Now I believe I've got everything out from the top. I'll turn it over to access, access the styrofoam underneath that's been taped on. You can see tape there, tape there. So if I put some, oops, cut my finger off on camera, will be good. Cut, cut, whoop, cut, cut. I'll put that over there for safety. See the styrofoam is now free. Probably turn it over. And, ooh, look at that. Very nice. Um, well finished little uh, baseboard that every uh, everything's mounted on there. So now for styrofoam, I uh, think we'll pop it aside. Later reference, just in case we uh, want to rebox it for whatever reason. I can't see a reason at the moment. A couple of wee imperfections there. Don't know what that's on. Oh, it's just, just well, heavy dust, I suppose. And the tuning capacitor is nice and free. Volume, uh, sorry, not volume. It's actually only the feedback control for the regeneration. And if I turn it over, you'll see underneath that it's hand wide, no printed circuit boards, and point to point wiring. And there's uh, some holders for the AA batteries. Today, we're not going to use AA batteries. We would have had to have gone out and specially got them. And I don't believe they're particularly good for the environment, just for a short term use for this. So I've got a little power supply here I'll pair it up with. In fact, I'll. Uh, Look for the right place to connect the wires and uh, link these two flying leads, positive and negative, for uh, a 13.8 volt power supply. I know that's a bit much, but um, I have nothing else available that conforms to 12 volts. And for short term operation, I don't believe it'll do any uh, terribly great harm. So I'll just give it a go and see. And I've also got this Bluetooth speaker to plug into the headphone jack, so um, you can hear at home what's going on. Oh, well, I might just uh, have a quick look to see what's what, and I'll come back and uh, we'll see how we are. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I'm just going to have a look now to see where I want to connect to. With the wires. Really self-explanatory underneath. Um, we just need to see, <laughs> and by lighting, last lighting, um, budget lighting, not quite that good. Well, I should be able to connect to that there. That little um, spring for negative, spring for negative, and the positive. Where's the best place to put that there? Well, I think I'll clip it to that switch mechanism. So it's nice and tight. Carefully turn it over. I know it's facing me, which is not the best. I'm sorry about that, but uh, I need to see what I'm doing. Okay, let's take the valve out of its uh, box. Plug it in. There's power's not applied yet. So as I might have mentioned before, I'm very, um, very uh, pleased or happy user of these 12AU7 Chinese production valves and radio circuits. I've had a lot of success with low voltage um, radios with these, and they have no trouble at all. But in saying that, my ears aren't good enough to distinguish the results in um, an audio frequency circuit, so I couldn't comment on the application and audio amplifiers, sorry, only in basic radio receivers. Because I know Christchurch, where I live, has very strong signals uh, in the AM band. I'm going to open up the AM coil and connect that. So I will be very careful to open the plastic fully. 
So I do not disturb any wires on that coil. Try not to, try the best I can. Um, this at the moment is a dial indicator. I won't put that on. Um, I can do that later. So it's well labeled. This I'm very, uh, very impressed. They've done a very good job of it. Well labeled up to where to put the coil. And um, there's three, um, three terminals if you like for the coil. And it can't be reversed because of the spacing on the pins. So there's a greater spacing uh, or the center could be offset. There's a different way to look at it. So I'll open this up fully. Plug in the AM band coil and I'm tightening, I'm tightening the screw terminals down again. So we're making good connection. I'm plugging the valve is valve or radio tube is nice and tight and it's nice porcelain socket. And the other thing I best mentioned is they seem to use, you know, very good quality parts in this little radio. Good airspace tuning capacitor. Well, I could turn that down, but I'll plug it into the headphones of it. I've got it turned right up. Now, if I was a professional, I'd do, um, I'd do pre, uh, pre-test with the multimeter. But I left the multimeter on the chair over there and I'm too lazy to go and get it. So without further ado, we'll turn it on. And the place where I've connected it, I've actually bypassed the switch. I can see the valve is heating up now. So it's actually turned on already. The valve is warmed up, I would say. Advanced the regeneration control. We can hear some background noise there already through the um, Bluetooth speaker. Now that Bluetooth speaker has a 3.5 millimeter auxiliary input, and that's what I've utilized with the connection to the set. As I'm just tuning without without any external earth or external antenna, because I believe the signals are so strong in Christchurch, I'm going to have some luck picking at least one station up. I'm just getting a feel where the regeneration kicks in. Whoops, that, that's not the right way to tune, sorry. <laughs> the uh, correct way to tune is turn the regeneration down below the point of oscillation, find a station and gently increase it till the station becomes louder and louder, but not to the point where you get a whistle. A whistle indicates the set is generating its own radio frequency oscillations which are beating in or heterodyning with that of the station. And that's the whistle. We don't want that. Because the set could be radiating and interfering with other people. So I'll just try and bring it up. Before the point of isolation. And tuning across the band. Oops. Done it again. There we are. And I found I increased the regeneration to a point I overdid it, brought it back, found a station, and now I'm going to increase the regeneration again. The distortion there, so it's probably. As good as it gets. So already, just with the antenna coil in Christchurch, we're picking up a station. A bit of... I think it's time to undo the... Um, undo the antenna and earth connections, throw something out, and um, try and improve the results. Whoops. But the main point I think you want to take in is that it's worked first time straight out of the box. Not overly loud. I mean, there's a lot of gain in that uh, Bluetooth speaker there. It's a very good Bluetooth speaker, by the way, even though it's a few years old now. It works very well. Seems to have a reasonable uh, preamp for the line in. 
I'm just going to extend that aerial wire, throw it to the side and um, try antenna terminal one. I'll open up the other antenna terminals. I'll just uh, refresh my memory about the circuit and see the method of connection of the antennas. Because one is designed for, well, A connection is designed, here we are. Well, antenna one is designed for the shortest connection possible. So I think, pardon me, I can bring the, uh, I'll bring you the circuit diagram directly. So antenna one is the most direct connection to the set. And two and three are for longer antennas. So I've got an antenna one. Just thrown down on the floor and on the side of the house. Not even put up in the air with any length. And that's helping enormously. Just trying to find the strongest signal. Oops, oscillating. Yes. That's up as far as it can go. So although there's volume there, it's not overly great. And headphones and a previous receiver I've owned have confirmed that stock standard out of the box. The results are not outstanding. But it does work. And it's only working on 12 volts nominally. So I think it's doing a good job despite that. I have... Uh, I have found before that the shortwave aerial uh, is best used at night time. So I won't try that at the moment, especially with no external antenna. Whoops. I wonder if the ground connection, I know the frame is to ground. Mm. I do believe that a ground connection as a rod driven into the bare earth would help. But I don't have that available here to show you, sorry. Uh, I think we've had enough of that, so um, I might uh, get together a few more components and see if I can do some modifications and improve that sound level to bring it up with a greater output. Um, I have had one of these receivers before and uh, I've tried different valves in it. And especially stock standard, the only valve that will work is the 12AU7. 12AT7 will not work and 12AX7 will definitely not work. Uh, a modified design, however they will.